Not him. Baby, not you sleep. Why are y'all both sleep? Knowing them, they're probably dreaming about the celestial adventures to come. Just as well. They've been running themselves ragged of late. Unlike you and the others, I'm a few steps removed from the danger and excitement. The things you all get up to never fail to impress me. But by the same token, I can't help but worry. Not only for your safety, but, but for your happiness. After everything you've sacrificed, you earned it a thousand times over. From the simple pleasures of tucking into a hearty meal or, or collapsing into a comfortable bed, to the grand triumphs of visiting legendary lands or finding true love you deserve all the joy in the world there is so much that life has to offer so much to be treasured and shared with those we hold dear so promise me this come what may you won't give up on your own happiness when you're out there fighting tooth and nail, it's all too easy to forget. But in the end, your passions will be your greatest strength of all. Remember that. Of course, Carl. Wake up, you little sleepyhead. Oh, this feels familiar. Well, it is good to be Uh wait. What are you? What am I? Gods, don't tell me I fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Not that there's any shame in it, but you were sleeping like babies. <laughs> oh. How embarrassing. Not a word to anyone. Understood? Not <laughs> one word. <laughs> I'm told that sleeping in proper beds of your own choosing is a much more effective way to prepare for battle. <laughs> oh. Poor baby. <laughs> so, what were the two of you doing here? I had a few books to return to the library. Thought I'd take care of it while I could. <laughs> and you? It's past time we were on our way. Wait.
Since I left home, I've made a great many mistakes. Mistakes for which I can never make amends. But through it all, you didn't give up on me. To have returned here with you at my side, it means more to me than you know. Thank you, from the bottom of my heart. <sighs> Forgive me, but it needed to be said. <laughs> I'm the one who owes you thanks. Were it not for you, I would not be alive today. Nor come to terms with Nidhogg's spirit. I am ever grateful. Well, we needn't make it a competition. You know, this must be what Heidling meant when she spoke about depending on one another. However treacherous the road before us, together we will prevail. Transcendent moment. What was it that I sought in you? Han, what was it that you sought in me? Not him in a conundrum. Not knowing what to do with himself. The gates are open. You may depart when ready. <laughs> Me? But I... Nah. Say it with your whole chest. No need to be coy, brother. Do it. And do it well. Your whole chest. Come on. If you all insist. <clears throat> Onward unto the distant stars and beyond. <laughs> Ragnarok, engage. <laughs> engage. Engage.
Oh wow. It's the 1.0 cutscene. That's what I, this is why they made me watch the 1.0 trailer. <laughs> Come on, girl. As the wind blows freely, I suppose all is as it should be in creation. I will render unto them a storm that they may pierce the firmament and fly free. Just you brace yourselves. We're about to arrive and the vessel will shake a good bit. That's no good. Man. Greetings. Can you hear me? So this is Meteon. Oh, have you met one of my sisters? I don't remember meeting you myself, but I do know that you're from Atheris. Why have you come? All you had to do was wait. I would have delivered to you your end. We didn't ask for that. I don't understand. All life is destined to end. Why choose to prolong your suffering? Effort, ambition, love. They amount to naught. Happiness, should you find it, is inevitably lost. Stolen away by events beyond your control. There is no logic nor meaning in it. You think there is. 
convince yourselves. But it's all a cruel accident. Come now. I speak the truth. A truth you would recognize if you looked up at the night sky. Unbroken emptiness. Cold, dark, and silent. Your world, like every other, is but a blemish upon its perfect fabric. Life is an anomaly. It is unnatural and cannot continue. The sooner you accept this, the easier it will be. Just to be clear, we're not here to argue with you. We know that life is fleeting, and that in the short time we have it, we're not assured happiness. Indeed. I've seen far more sorrow in the eyes of many I've met. I myself have plenty of regrets. And one day they'll die with me. Gone to dust with my good deeds and unfulfilled dreams. But we accept this. That our existence may seem pointless. That sorrow, rage and despair will always dog our heels. And we press on regardless. That is why Heidlin guided us here. In her boundless love for mankind, she has prepared us for this trial. And in her name, we have come for you. Yes, I sense it. A burning passion like unto fury. I know it well. For the same passion once burned in many a star before yours. Suffocated and extinguished now. Approach the bounds of my ultimate, where emotions dictate reality, where resignation and acceptance unite to embrace the end, where those who yet valiantly cling to life can thrive. So it was that the brave wayfarers arrived at last at Dream's End. In following their path walked and history written, I am made keenly aware of one truth. Though the curtains may fall again and again, so long as others take the stage, ever shall there be more tales to tell. So, let them bring it to a close, I say. Let the curtains fall upon this. The final chapter in the tale of the star. No, 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 no. Don't. Is this a dead star? Do not play the song. The environment itself shouldn't kill us. Well then, let us search for Thancred while exploring the area. 
The ship we leave in your care. This looks like Omega's stuff. Yeah, this is this is where is this where Omega's from? What the frick? Do you not see it? Bro, what? Bruh, I don't like that. Then you please tell me you see that fucking dragon. Thank you, Estinian. Thank you. Is a memory of a world that once was. A world suffering a slow death, whose denizens cried out for the release of oblivion. What? Their world is dead? It is. Not a single life remains upon that husk floating in the vast emptiness. These creatures are shadow and shade, perpetuated only to suffuse Dynamis with their unending lamentations. Our friend Sankrit, where is he? A strange question. He is at your side, is he not? Oh yes, he is here. And there, and everywhere within this space. He would tell you himself if he had form to form words. Bitch. Huh. Such loathing and uncertainty. You don't know why you still exist. In like manner to the oblivion I said. I tried to drown out your ether with dynamis. Beginning with this Thancred, who came at me despite being unable to breathe. Such a simple thing, unmaking men. In the blinking of an eye, he was gone. Didn't even have the chance to be transformed. Yet somehow, he managed to leave a slither of himself behind. What you call... the heart? Or perhaps the soul? In his final moment, he... cried out from it. A single word. 
survive. <gasps> that wish proved stronger than the despair that ruled here. It overpowered it, causing this space to be remade. Into a place you can perceive, and where life can endure. That you draw breath is proof that his soul lives on. But how long, however, remains to be seen. It's crazy how they kind of already revealed kind of what his home world looked like when you fight him in the Omega Scape. It has the green pillars of gas coming out the ground and stuff. I'm just like, yeah, this is this is the place. I'll handle this. So, waiting to die like all the others, are you? So you say, yet your kind has found a new beginning on our star. One of you braved the expanse, bearing with him a clutch of eggs. They and their children now rule our skies, their song heard by all. suffered much and repaid their suffering in kind Had your brethren made the self-same choice, my family might still be alive. Yet lasting peace does not come to those who simply retreat from conflict. No, you must be willing to confront it, to stare into the face of your foe and see yourself in him. Only then, can you break the cycle of torment and tragedy? This lesson, a dear friend taught me at the risk of his life. There is no nobility in your penance. You wallow in self-pity. And after everything we've endured, we will not let you stop us.
to you. Justinian too. All right, bro. There's a wind. He's opened the way for us. Sacrificed himself to remake this place, like Thancred did. <laughs> oh, Alphano. Bro, they can't stop doing this shit, bro. <sighs> Come, let us follow the wind. It will not lead us astray. He would not. So that's your story. While I appreciate your advice, I will not heed it. Convinced though you may be of this truth, it is yours and not mine. Indeed truth, I have ever believed, is in the eye of the beholder. Are you suggesting that we have reached a faulty conclusion? But our science failed us. Hardly. As you yourself said, the subject matter is beyond my comprehension. And that, I accept, is true. I do not possess the knowledge to prove or disprove your conclusion. In my mortal years, I doubt I could even approach the wisdom of the air. But of one thing am I absolutely certain. I would not be happier in ignorance. You stole a no! You mustn't! The most important lesson I've learned is that learning isn't simply passing one's eyes over words. Nay. <laughs> It is when understood for oneself that knowledge attains its true value. This is what has sustained me, driven me onward in joy and wonder, in anger and sorrow. The universe may end, and all may be for naught, but I will live as I always have. I will always seek out new knowledge, and no conclusion of yours, no matter how grim, can dampen my desire. I suppose it is only to be expected. Their feeble minds cannot fathom the terrifying gravity of it. But worry not. We consider it our duty to enlighten you. And we will not stop until you grasp the full extent of our despair. Keep calm and listen well. Though my body will soon dissipate, there may be a way to restore it. Asm's magic. So long as our souls remain, you can use it to summon us back. 
But you mustn't, for it would mean losing our way forward. This I only reveal so that you can promise not to invoke the magic. We came here knowing what victory may cost, so press on. Press on, and do not look back. shall join you. As subterfuge is not required, thou shalt not suffer for mine absence. Briange. My resolve hath never been as strong as thine. Full oft have I wavered in my decisions, and afterwards been stricken with regret. In spite of this, I may still stand with my comrades, supporting them as they attempt the greatest of feats. This truth I have learned in the course of our journey. And many though my shortcomings may be, I may also claim to excel in prophecies. My studies, into which have granted me the flexibility of mind needed to bend this malleable reality. Thus shall I hope that thou mayest have the strength to resist, and our comrades the strength to continue. With you to urge us on, how could we possibly fail? Because it relies upon it, or something akin to it, as a source of energy. My thoughts exactly. And there is a good chance the same is true of the Omicrons and their devices. So, shall I cast caution to the wind and try something reckless and dramatic? Let's go ahead. <laughs> Arthur using the custom made Omega Gem. You still have it! Sid and Nero's legendary device which brought low the super weapon Omega. Nerd. I have no aspirations. No longer can I dream. The vital spark is lost. Lost amidst circuitry and code and commands. I believe I know how to overcome this despair. The words are ready in my mind, but ere I speak them... I want you to make me a promise. Be it across time or space, our promises have always connected us. And so I ask that you indulge me once more, that this won't be the end. Forcing you through this again is the last thing I want, and I'm sorry. But we've never broken a promise to each other. So I ask that you have faith in us, and hear my request. First, 
I want to visit Ishgard with you. Properly. We scarcely had time to look around last time. I should like it very much if you could show me the site. Next, you must regale me with your greatest adventures in the places where you lived them, if possible. I may have read about all your deeds, but there is no substitute for a first-hand account. And last but not least, a new adventure together, unlike any we've experienced before. We'll travel the lands, cross the seas, and take to the skies upon the eternal wind, and it will be marvelous. It will. If you would humor me a moment, when we awaken each morning, how can we prove that we're the same individual who retired the night before? Through the remembrance of past events, we might say. We have our memories, yet there are times when we forget or recall incorrectly. What of our bodies, then? It is the same one, we might say, yet technically speaking, as living beings, our bodies are constantly changing. It will never be as it was at an earlier point in time. Our souls are no more immutable. On our star, people are known to inherit the souls of others, yet they are decidedly different beings. For my part, I've subjected my totality to much and more. I've made my body into an extension of a tower, blended my soul and memories with those of another self. And each time I would ask myself, what is it that makes me, me? We have the ability to tell you an answer. No, but that doesn't mean I'm confused. It simply means I'm the same as everyone else. So I posit this, who we were, need not prescribe what we now hold in our hearts. Whatever came before, what matters most is the present. For me, that is being here with my friends, full proud of how much we've grown together. So I urge you to not give up. Heed your heart's desire and hope that the future you long for shall be realized. I too have struggled to find the courage to express and embrace my wants. If you like, I will tell you a tale. A tale of a world on the brink. Of a people who never gave up on the future. Of a man who realized his grandest dreams and then awakened to a grander reality.
to the end. Sorry. I've been playing this game. This is like the end. It is just. I, I, I know it's, it should be okay, but it just doesn't make it any better with what's happening on my screen. And this song isn't helping. Whatsoever. <laughs> like, this is an 11 year in the making story. Like, like earlier I was like, imagine not doing any of the side content in the game and just rushing. Because there's like a fulfillment in it. Because you see so many of the characters. And people you meet in the game come to your aid in your time of need because of what you've done for them. And that shit. That, that's really touching. And <laughs> oh god. I have no one but to blame for myself. I wanted this, I wanted this expansion, and I'm getting it. I'm just trying to end it. I'm trying to get to the end. I'm almost there. Medion, I really can't wait to slap the fuck out of you so you can go in peace, because it's the way. Like... Like I'm not I I'm not really mad at her cuz she's just she was trying to do it. She was told and she found out like some sad shit and it corrupted her to be like that. So it's just like she I can't really be fully mad at her. But it's just it's it's shitty. <laughs> This is all built up from yesterday because I wanted to cry like three times, but I held it and I didn't. And I've just been crying today all the. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many ruined worlds like this has Meteon seen. Ah, oh. could it be? Yes. Yes, I believe I may have puzzled this out. Despite how it appears, it's no different this time. There is someone here who has wished for this ruin. And I believe that together, Alize and I can overcome their will.
I'm afraid it has to be done. For our comrades, for everyone on Etheris, and for myself. I will not pretend otherwise. I have my fears. Not for myself, but for you. The last to remain. You are no stranger to carrying the burden of others. But I can only imagine how heavy the weight would be this time. As your friend, I cannot bear the thought of making you suffer so. Then why suggest such a thing? It's too much to ask of anyone, even her. Why must she be the one? Why must she fight alone? More than a hero, she's a dear friend. Not only to us, but to so many others. There are so many people in the world who care for you, and yet... And yet... <laughs> Alize. I have an idea. Given the nature of this realm, it may be possible to do more than unbar our friend's path. We might also pave her a new one. For instance, a path where she finds happiness at journey's end. This much, I think we can believe with the utmost conviction, no matter how deep our despair. So please, believe in us too, and press on. Thank you. What are you? If the plan's decided, then let's not dally. <laughs> ah, there you are. It was as I said, was it not? It was. We couldn't find anyone. But this place isn't entirely deserted, is it? You are here. You sought out a star of promise and found a ruined husk. Like us, you explored the devastation. Like us, you were stricken. Horrified by the thought that so many lives could be snuffed out as if they were worth nothing. And the thought that you would have to bear the terrible tidings to Hermes. That which you saw and felt, you shared with your sisters. As did they share their own grim findings with you. Overcome by the pervasive despair of these stars, some of you inadvertently ushered their peoples to their ends. Knowing the horrors you know, anyone would feel the same. They would fear what lies ahead and struggle to move forward. Fear? I had forgotten that such a thing existed. So focused have I been on shepherding despair. If you can remember, then you can still face and overcome your own fear. Why would I bother with such an insignificant emotion? If the despair I command is as a raging river, 
then fear is but a trickling stream. It can do nothing to alter my flow. You spoke with the Aya, yes? Heard their tale of what awaits the universe. It's true. The stars grow colder and more distant. Eventually, all will enjoy frozen solitude. Using the power of Dynamis, I'm hastening that process. In so doing, nothing will be born ever again. Everyone will remain dead. Alas, it will take time for that to happen. So in mercy, I sent you my gift. To spare you needless suffering. Don't worry. Even if no living witnesses remain to mark the event. I'll make certain that Etheris has a proper end. For all the power you wield, you're more fearful than the familiar you used to be. That meteor feared simply to move forward, but your fear is such that you've given up on everything. I know it well. That sense of defeat, I've tasted my fair share of it. But as many times as we've fallen down, we've learned how to pick ourselves up and carry on. We take each other's hand, share in each other's courage, follow in each other's footsteps, and turn sorrow into strength. There are times when we fail. We bear wounds that do not heal. But these experiences are part of life, and they make us stronger. We rise, fall, and rise again. after that. Let them all be safe. <gasps> Cryo, are you all right? It's nothing, just a headache. Oh, they'll be fine. I know they will. Apologies for the interruption. A man arrived on the last ferry, an associate of the Scions. He wishes to speak with you at once.
I swear to God. I swear. Xenos, you big bitch. What are you doing? 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 What are you doing?